you were in the John Witherspoon roast. Yes. It was truly an honor for me to do one of his last interviews. My man. Truly. He sat right where you're sitting right now. This was a few months before he passed. I remember one of the nicest compliments I got was from Chuck D. After, after Witherspoon passed, he said, Vlad gave Witherspoon the respect of a Jerry Seinfeld when he sat down and had John tell his life story. And I remember when John Witherspoon died yeah, and you went on Twitter and you said, Vlad was the only person that actually sat down with John, one of our heroes, yeah. and documented his life. T you know, told the story from beginning to now right. about this very iconic person that no documentaries were even looking at. No. You know, gave him the respect. I think you can compare him to like a Jerry Seinfeld or something like right. that. I'm like, ah, oh, he gets it. Like Chuck, Chuck gets what I'm doing here. I'm actually documenting people's lives because more often than not, these people die without that Crickets. type of documentation. And, you know, Chuck was very grateful over the interview that, that I helped conduct. And uh, he ended up dying a few a few months later. You know, I got to drive him home and everything else like that. Uh, very, an incredible talent. Incredible. The, the thing that really impressed me the most was when he told me that most of his iconic lines were ad libs. All the boomerang stuff, ad libs. Eddie pulled him in. It wasn't even in the script. He just pulled him in on an extra day of shooting. That whole mushroom belt with the mushroom thing, that wasn't in the script. He went into wardrobe and just picked out some weird stuff and, and just created a whole thing out of it. Did you know him well? Yes. Mm. Oh, very well. Um. Mm. My last time with him, we was at the airport, and um, he gave me a ride to his house, and I caught an Uber from my house to, from his house to my house. John was, um, he was the best man. He was, I, <laughs> he was just the best man. He was a great person, man, and he, he always gave us what we needed. <laughs> he, he was just my man. I did um, Black Jesus with him. Oh, you were in, uh, in Black yeah, Jesus? Yeah, okay. I did Black Jesus with him. I did a few things with John, but I toured with him many a time. And then Chicken Wings and Molat. <laughs> got to have that Molat quick. You got to... <laughs> yeah, God yeah. bless him. I remember I asked him, I said, uh, you're in your 80s, you got money. Why do you, uh, why do you keep doing stand-up he said i like that cash i like that cash but i go home and count them dollars while i'm eating them chicken wings <laughs> drinking that mo life. well you're 76 years old now yeah you've been doing this for 40 years more than 40 more than 40 years oh yeah what keeps you going all these years you because most most money? most 76 year olds would probably be retired by now money i i, I like that cash keep you alive if I had to get up now, I mean, uh, get doing an interview like this, if I, I would be sitting at home by my waterfall. Now, you do the roast, and Paul Mooney was on that roast. Yeah. That's when you call Paul Mooney uh, a gay uncle. Yeah. And I guess there was a, a story with that, with Tracy Ellis Ross. Oh, yeah. Um, I was at the only few... Um, black awards that I was invited to. Well, anyway, I had Tracy Ross sitting beside me and I was there. Couldn't tell me nothing. We was, the vibe was there. Was oh high. yeah? Oh yeah. You were about to get in there. Oh man. <laughs> I was in the red zone, man, I'm telling you. Oh yeah. So we in there talking and everything. So it's going good and everything. I'm telling what my next move is after this over. Can I get it to the crib? At least get the number, drop off something. I'm in there. Paul get up this motherfucker and just started talking shit about her mother. I mean, it wasn't even funny. It was cruel shit in the ground. And I'm like, come on, Paul. 
and it kills her. So she jumps up and run up and run up out of it. Oh, she leaves. She leaves. Okay. My night shot. <laughs> <laughs> so he <laughs> didn't fuck my shit up. I had Tracy. I was about to have a baby. One of the Rosses, the Supreme, the air. <laughs> this nigga, the kill nigga. No, I would have bragged like that, nigga. I would have got that. Well, anyway, we had the roast. And um, he was there. And my friend, his name is he another comedian. He wrote the joke because he owed me some money. I said, man, give me. I wiped that two hundred dollars off. I got this roast to do, right? And he wrote the joke. That's why he seen me reading. So I read the joke. Paul Mooney is proof, cause I didn't, I didn't even rehearse it. I looked at Paul Mooney is proof that everybody got a gay uncle, and I was okay. Shit wasn't nothing. I didn't know the backstory, cause I knew I didn't know about. The ledge or sexuality of Paul or you shouldn't say shit about Paul. None of that shit. But I did know that motherfucker fucked up my ass. <laughs> so everybody went crazy. Oh, shit. Oh, he said that about Paul. So we went on a um, commercial break and I was in the bathroom. Paul was in the bathroom. That what you said, brother, was not funny at all, and I'm going to get you for this and everything. Man, fuck you, Paul. <laughs> you know? Just you like know, that. Yeah, hey, 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 fuck you, Paul. It's a roast. You know what I mean? You act like I said this shit over here. And you, and that's why I said you, 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 you fuck people up everywhere you go. You determine who ain't a real nigga, who ain't, who ain't supposed to be in Hollywood, who's selling out. You the, you the barometer who, who real niggas are to be looked up to or shunned in Hollywood. Man, fuck you. So we get back out there and he do his shit. Man, and when I tell you it was dark, lad. Eat the inside of, kiss the inside of the darkest fat. Hole of my asshole. That's what he said. It was something like that. I was like, ugh, Paul. <laughs> you know, I'm like, ugh. You know, that shit ain't funny. Ugh. So, that's what it was. Yeah. I mean, later on, the whole, uh, what was it, Richard Pryor's bodyguard said yeah. that uh, that Paul had, had raped uh, Pryor's son. Mm. And uh, Pryor's son spoke about it, but he didn't deny it. So I, I don't know what happened. I don't know. But Pryor said he was gay at a roast. Pryor said that, that Paul Mooney was gay. Yeah. And he didn't say shit to Richard Pryor. I mean, Richard Pryor was bisexual, wasn't he? I don't know. Like, again, I ain't well, never fucked him. <laughs> I ain't never but fucked him. But I heard it. <laughs> no, well, he wrote Someone about it in his book, that. right? He wrote that he had, he had sex with a transgender. I, I didn't even read his book, but, I, you know, I always say that. Uh, but that's what they say. Man, it's, I remember my man. I forgot his name. Um, but he was a friend of mine's, and he passed, man. God, I forgot. He had a funny joke about that. And his joke was, the reason why they say bi, um, heterosexual men start fucking other men and be experimenting because they just get too much pussy. False. That's what he said. <laughs> and, his and his joke said, even if that's true, Tell me what that number is so I can stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you know what happens when 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 I get too much pussy. Probably time for some new pussy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's what happens to me. I say, you know, it might be time for some new pussy. Yeah. I don't think you know. A big hairy man is gonna have to <laughs> satisfy my needs from here on in because none of these. I've just had sex with. Now, if I had sex with every single woman on earth, you know, all billion, three billion of them, then maybe there might, that might be a bridge that I have to cross. But as long as there's more women out there, <laughs> right? I just, that's not a real thing. That's not a real mentality. I've heard these type of weird, like, oh yeah, you got so much pussy, you just ends up fucking with men. Nah. That's not a, that, that's just not what happens in a heterosexual man's life. Now what they say, man. They no. say you get so no, much pussy no, no. that you're so tired of pussy, it's time for you to get a dick. Yeah. yeah. Not, that's I, what they I say. I don't know about that. 